Good evening, everyone. And welcome to our virtual opening of a Prairie Vernacular. Um, we are so happy that you can join us tonight, and we hope that sometime before the summer is out, you'll be able to uh, come and visit us live. Uh, I'd like to start to begin by acknowledging that Red Deer is at the junction of Treaty 6 and Treaty 7 territories, and we acknowledge the Cree, the Soto, and the Dene people who are the signatories to Treaty 6, and the members of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Nisitapi, who were the signatories of Treaty 7, as well as the Métis people who made their homes in this area for many years. We go forward with uh, an acknowledgement of our colonial past and hope to move forward uh, in a good way. Um, tonight, we're so pleased to open a Prairie Vernacular. It has been a very exciting week here as we have uh, installed it. Um, it is a touring exhibition that was organized by the Moose Jaw Museum, as well as the Esplanade uh, Museum and Art Gallery in Medicine Hat. And it pulls together um, the traditions of folk art on the prairies and works by contemporary artists who were inspired by folk art traditions. Um, it is just the most wonderful exhibition. I'm sharing my screen here with Ford by Joe Fafard. Uh, and there are works by uh, notable artists like uh, Joe Fafard, Ivan Ayer, William Karelik, who are all inspired by, by the folk art traditions. Um, at this point, I'll turn it over to Buck Buchanan. Buck is uh, the representative of City Council on our board, and he will bring greetings from the City of Red Deer. Over to you, Buck. Well, good evening, everyone, and thank you very much, Lorna. Uh, you know, uh, I, as Lorna very no knows very well, I'm kind of the most untechy uh, person in the world. So uh, th thanks to, to Carly and Lorna for being able to do this, uh, you know, in regards to this uh this exhibition, this prairie vernacular, and I'm uh, usually a very uh, in-person kind of a, a, a person, so it's very, very difficult for me not to, to know and see who's, uh, who's actually watching. But uh, for those of you that are out there, uh, just so happens that, you know, as Lorna said, I am on the board, and uh, just so happens that uh, this month I, uh, I am the deputy mayor uh, at the city. Uh, so... Uh, on behalf of all of my colleagues and, uh, you know, uh, Mayor Veer, uh, we certainly want to welcome everyone the best we certainly can. Uh, I know we're all getting somewhat tired. I was just sitting here thinking to myself, uh, this is a different platform, uh, you know, from the WebEx and the Zooms and the Microsofts. Uh, I even have a board that uh, uses one called Blue Jeans, believe it or not. So, but, uh, you know, as is being said, uh, Thanks to all that are, uh, you know, uh, watching and, uh, you know, uh, we look forward to trying to uh, get you back into the building uh, to uh, actually see things in person. And as Lorna said, uh, as her folks always do, they do a superb job with the exhibits and I'm sure this one will be absolutely no different. So again, welcome. Thank you very much for sh uh, coming, those of you that have and look forward to you know, putting uh, the exhibition out there to you. So thanks again for uh, for asking me to to say a few words. Thank you, Buck. Tonight, uh, I guess if you were here in person, we would offer you a libation. So if you want to pour yourselves a drink or a cup of coffee or a hot chocolate, uh, what we will do is we will have some music by Brianna Lizotte. Uh, Brianna is a very up and coming, wonderful uh, Métis fiddler. Uh, and she has uh, performed for quite a number of our events. So she's going to perform a song. Then uh, our curators at the museum here will show you some of their favorite pieces from the exhibition. And we'll end up with a little bit more music from Brianna. So I'll turn it over to you, Brianna. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lorna. And thank you all to uh, all of you for coming out. Um, my name is Brianna Lazat. The first tune that I'll play for you is called Big John McNeil. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thanks so much, you guys, for having me out today. Thanks, Brianna. Okay, uh, now uh, we'll turn things over to Joanne Grunberg, who's one of our curators of art here at the MAG, and she's going to talk about her favorite piece in the exhibition. Over to you, Joanne. Great. Thank you, Lorna. So I am going to talk about a piece called Canning Peaches by Hazel Litzkis, and you can see that over my shoulder here. So I'm gonna to try to turn this camera around so you can have a better look at it. And I'll just tell you a little bit about it. So let's see if I can get the whole thing in the screen here. <laughs> so Hazel Litzkis was raised near Lloydminster, Alberta, and she works in watercolor depicting childhood scenes from her family farm. And in this watercolor painted in 1970, we see a farmhouse kitchen and a family canning peaches. Uh, I was drawn to this piece just because of the subject matter. Right now, the world can seem pretty stressful and chaotic, but this scene, I think, provides us with a little bit of comfort. You can almost hear the crackle of the wood stove, the fruit bubbling away on it, and the clink of glass jars as they're being filled. Um, I also thought it was interesting to note that this painting is meant to depict a scene from the artist's childhood about, I think about 80 years ago. So it's an activity that we maybe would have considered old fashioned, but in this last year, so many of us, has, so many of us have turned to our kitchens and our gardens as a means of escape. And so for that reason, I feel like this painting is relevant and relatable in this time period. So I was supposed to choose one piece to look at, but I just want to show you the one that is next to me here because it relates so well to this. So this is uh, Prairie Blue with October Pickles by Saskatchewan artist Vic Sikansky. So we can sort of see almost the 3D rendition, I guess, of the canning peaches. There might be some peaches in there somewhere. So I am going to put on my mask and I am going to take you through the gallery to our education coordinator, Lynn, and she is going to talk about another piece. So you'll get a little bit of a sneak peek through the gallery. And I'll just mention that on May 15th, we will be having a curator's talk with um, Joanne Marion and Jennifer McCrory. They are the curators of this exhibition. So you can check out our um, website, I think, for that information. And here we have Lynn. Hello. Sorry, Thank I'll, you, Joanne. Let me get you in there, Lynn. <laughs> OK. Hello. Thank you, Joanne. I'm Lynn LaFour, the Education Coordinator here at the MAG. And um, I've chosen this piece um, as one of my favorites. It really intrigues me. So this artist is Dawn Frosch. And this art piece is called Light Strata Number no. 5. So what drew me in about this piece that excited me is it is a really strong yet subtle work on contrast and movement. So it is a sculpture, but it reads a bit like a drawing and painting. You can see it's a beautiful view, a beautiful okay, uh, curry landscape. It is a sculpture. So these really strong colors are uh, a little pull for you to be able to turn and rotate 
the piece to make it a kinetic sculpture. Now sculpture is something that's viewed from the round. Most times you have to walk all the way around a piece of sculpture, but in this case, Don, he is creating this sculpture in, as something that you can make it a little bit more playful and something that you can move yourself. So it's strong in contrast because you have these really strong, uh, solid chrome shiny pieces contrasted with the really soft matte delicate drawings of the pencil and pencil crayon and I know it's really um, detailed you may not be able to get or appreciate the the beauty in it up close but even though your eye moves throughout the picture plane from the chrome clouds from here down to the lake along the side, you'll see the drawing goes all the way around all four sides, five sides if you include the top, and it leads your eye back here. But you also find that there's some lovely movement and rhythms in the the rolling hills of the prairies. Don is known for doing a lot of sculptures and printmaking work and he really likes to capture the prairies. But you'll also see the rhythm is continued into the reflection of the chrome base. So he's done this beautiful contrast of hard and soft and delicate and um, movement throughout the piece. But the other thing that draws me in a little bit more is the quirky irony of what he's created. Now we've all seen a prairie landscape after the rain with a, a rain bow but he's got the rain here but under the clouds he's got light strata and light rays under the clouds instead of around the clouds. A cloud is supposed to cast shadow and rain but here in every single situation the clouds are casting rays of light and over here in the corner you will see the the typical naive um, drawing of the sun right up in the corner, shoved right into the corner, but he's done something quirky here where he's taken the sun and he's placed it right into the corner of the piece. So there's some really naivety, playful childhood thing, um, childhood abilities here, but Don is a trained artist. He's from Ontario, but he went to school at the University of Manitoba in Winnipeg and studied fine arts and education. So this isn't a uh, a prairie artist who hasn't been trained he is a very well trained artist so once again it's contrast it's movement and it has that quirky irony of the playfulness of the light which really okay. intrigues me so great. thank you great. so you can go on and introduce Oops. pat matheson great thanks lynn okay so i'll take you through the gallery here to where we can find pat our other curator of art and I'll just mention that through this exhibition, we will be giving a series of mini talks about different themes in the exhibition. So you can look for those on, on our website, I think. And here we have Pat. Welcome, everyone. Um, when we were asked to kind of pick out a favorite piece for this exhibition, there were so many to pick from, but I kept kind of getting drawn to, it's called Kill subtitled Leopard and Deer by the late Saskatchewan artist Sam Spencer. Um, and it's carved wood and enamel paint, basically, is all it is. Um, and it is a really macabre subject matter, and it's enhanced by the bright red blood and the rifles around the edges and things like that that really drive home the message or the statement that the artist was trying to say. Um, there's three things I get away from, I get from it that's I'm drawn to it but repelled by it at the same time. but um, I think the first level that I look at it at, I kind of can see a little bit of the where the artist was coming from. He uh, was a trapper and a hunter, so he obviously knew his animals and his wildlife, um, and even the weapons that he may have used for uh, working with them. There's shotguns and uh, repeating rifles in this. Uh, I, the other thing that I kind of uh, big with it is the visual art aspects to it. Um, as a prairie vernacular folk artist, um, what he's done in this piece, which I find really amazing, it's all one piece. He's carved um, all this out of one solid piece of wood. If you look at it totally from the side, um, the leopard's head doesn't come out any further than the rifles do, things like that. Um, so it's, and it just looks like an old piece of barn wood that he's actually used to carve this into. Um, it has a whole bunch of the other sort of signs or telltale marks of folk art in it. Uh, the bright colors, the kind of childlike approach to how he's done the animals, even though he does know them really well. Things like that that are just kind of, um, you, you're compelled to kind of go into it and look further. Um, and then another thing that I find really interesting in it is 
while he was doing this, there was a whole movement of professionally trained um, artists that were also kind of moving in this direction too. The California funk movement had produced some, uh, came out of a ceramics tradition, but there was artists like Roy DeForest and Keith Haring that were working on things where they were using the whole piece, like frame and everything to sort of embellish their narratives that they were trying to do. And I find that really kind of fascinating that this was all happening at the same time. But even further back, if we went back to the Romantic period, there's a really famous piece by an English painter, uh, George Stubbs, called uh, Lion Attacking a Horse. And it has that same sort of feel to it, the horror and the violence of it and everything like that. And if you want to even go further back, the Romans were doing sculptures that had these kind of same similar interests and stuff. So I'm always curious with somebody like Sam Spencer, whether he actually was aware of those kind of uh, art history behind him or whether this was all just sort of fresh in his mind and he just wanted to tell a really good story. That's great. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. Well, thank you, everyone. I, I do encourage you as soon as we can uh, open our doors to come and have a look at the exhibition. There are just so many uh, wonderful works that resonate. Uh, everybody, all the staff who've looked at it have, have had stories to tell and uh, the works have just generated so many memories and fond thoughts about growing up on the prairies. So I'm gonna turn it back over to uh, Brianna to uh, play us some tunes. For sure. All right, so I've got two tunes for you guys. Uh, the first one is called Maple Sugar, a Canadian classic. And the second one is called The Red River Jig, and it is the unofficial Métis Nation anthem for the Métis people. So let's start it off with some Maple Sugar. to the Red River Jig. Thank you. 
you so much. Uh, if you want to catch some events that I'll be doing and all that stuff, it'll be on my Facebook at Brianna Lazat and also on uh, Instagram, Brianna Lazat Music. I just want to thank you guys so much. And I want to thank the, uh, the Red Deer Museum for inviting me to play for their uh, little sneak peek at their um, exhibit tonight. I had so much fun and I hope you guys enjoyed this little set that I did for you today.